Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner. And this is my fur baby, Bella. Bella, say hi. In today's video, I will be going over the difference between Broca's aphasia and Wernicke's aphasia, also sometimes pronounced as Wernicke's aphasia. But before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. So we're going to start with Wernicke's aphasia or Wernicke's aphasia. Well, Wernicke's aphasia is named after a German neurologist named, named Karl Wernicke because he is the one that made this association that people that had a stroke or trauma in this specific region that they were demonstrating these characteristics. You can characterize your speech as word salad, it's just a bunch of words thrown together that don't really make sense. Another word for it would be gibberish. Sounds like gibberish. So in Wernicke's aphasia, they can speak completely normal. They have no trouble speaking. And for that reason, they, they are fluent speakers still. And that's why it's called, it's also called fluent aphasia or receptive aphasia. Now receptive, think of the word receive. The problem with Wernicke's aphasia is that they can't receive messages. If you tell them, go ahead and raise your arm, they won't follow that command. They won't raise their arm for you to take their blood pressure. They have trouble understanding. Reading and writing is often severely impaired. What works well for them is pictures though. They can still recognize pictures. They do have preserved intellectual and cognitive function, so they can still think it when it's not in regards to language or speech. So for example, maybe dancing, maybe they were a dancer, they can still dance or they can still build something with their hands. People with Wernicke's aphasia, it can sound like they're saying a sentence to you. They have the right timing, the words, Grammatic, sometimes grammatically correct sentences, but it really doesn't mean anything together. It's just a bunch of words strung together. A lot of the damage that happens in Wernicke is, is in the posterior temporal area of the brain. The area is known as Wernicke's area, and that is, and hence why it's called Wernicke's aphasia. Now, I'm gonna give you a simple way to remember Wernicke's versus Broca's. Stay till the end for the simple uh, way to know how to say Broca's. With Wernicke's aphasia, just think that someone is talking to you, perhaps in a different language, and you don't understand. So in German, the W is pronounced as, as a V. So you can imagine it one of two ways. Either you're talking to, you're, you're in Germany, you're talking to someone trying to say something in German and they're like, what are you saying? Like they don't understand you. So with Wernicke's or Wernicke's aphasia, you don't know what they're saying. Other people wouldn't know what you're saying. So it's, what are you saying? And then I'll give you another one for Broca's or you can just say, what are you saying? So in Wernicke's again, to consolidate it, to break it down into the easiest, simplest terms, they're super fluent, they're talking, they're fine. You just do not understand what they're saying. So it's like, I might as well be speaking in Spanish, you know? I might as well be like, hola, como esta, todo bien, blah, 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 right? And you're just like, what? Like, I don't understand what you're saying. Keep in mind though that in Wernicke's, they are speaking in English. A lot of times they will engage what's called the neologisms, which is making up new words. They don't realize they're doing it at all. So a sentence might say like, blue fuzzy bunny rabbit. Let's, now let's move on to Broca's aphasia. With Broca's, people have trouble speaking, but their comprehension is intact. So the, in their brain, everything is still intact. So this is why this is called non-fluent or expressive aphasia. If I can't get it out, it's expressive. I can't express myself, right? Whereas the other Wernicke's is receptive. I can't understand. What are you saying, right? Picking the right words is often a laborious process. Some people have more difficulty in using verbs than nouns. A person with Broca's aphasia may understand speech fairly well, especially when you use simple sentences. They may be able to read but have limited ability in writing. Broca's aphasia is named after a French scientist, Paul Broca, and he was the first one that noticed these deficits when there was localized brain damage to the area. The way that Broca's aphasia may look is Someone asked me a question, 
for example, um, someone asked me a question, for example, there was a teenager that had had a stroke and they were asking her questions like, how old are you? And she was like, I am, mm, I can't, like she couldn't think of how old, she couldn't, she couldn't express how old she was. So she would have to write it down. You can just see how hard they're trying to express themselves. In broke as a facial, the best way I can describe it is, you know that feeling when you have a word on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it or get it out? That's kind of what broke as a facial it is, appears to look like. So in their brain, again, they have the ability to comprehend, but I'm gonna pretend like I have broke as a facial. So the first question would be, um, what's your name? And then I, it would be difficult. I, I would, I would, it would take me time, and I would say something along the lines of, my my name it. And then what you'll notice is that they get frustrated. It's like. Ugh, you do not see this frustration with Wernicke's aphasia. Because again, in Broca, in, in Wernicke's, they don't even realize that their speech is nonsensical, so they don't get frustrated. But in Broca's, it's frust they visibly get frustrated because imagine wanting to say something, but, but your, your brain is not, your mouth is not listening to your brain. It's not doing what your thoughts are telling it to do. It's very frustrating. So you have to be patient with these individuals. Um, eventually I may get it out and I may say like, Bridget, you know? And again, me not having Broca's aphasia, this is a feeble, feeble attempt to kind of help and, and illustrate what it would appear to, to look like. But there's plenty of YouTube videos on um, Wernicke's and Broca's that you can also check out from people that have actually suffered trauma or a stroke. Um, and then, as promised, the easiest way to remember Broca's aphasia is, I think, B for but, right? Let's hang with me, right? So I know what I want to say, but I can't get it out. I know what I want to say, but I can't get it out. So B for Broca's. What are you saying for Wernicke's or Wernicke's? What are you saying? I don't understand you. Uh, that is when you're trying to communicate to somebody or they're communicating to you and you have no idea what they're saying. I see, I see in patients because I, because my background was in mental health when before becoming a nurse practitioner, I've seen a lot of the word salad and in schizophrenia, they, they haven't suffered a stroke. They haven't had a specific trauma to the area. However, because there are changes in the brain in schizophrenia, I do see that sometimes where it will mimic Wernicke's aphasia. They will have neologisms, they will make up words, they will be speaking gibberish, just you can't understand what they're saying, or they do have the loose associations, flight of ideas, um, salad yesterday, I went to the salad yesterday, french fries park, right? And, the, and they, they're trying to tell me that yesterday they went to the park. So that would be something of, of what it would sound like. If you stuck till the end, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Until next time.